What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's FPL transfer tips time for game week 34. So as always, going to look through the transfer market, see who FPL managers are buying, see who they're selling, and then talk about whether it's a mistake, a good move, or whatever it might be, taking into account fixtures and everything else. Now, this week, more than a lot of weeks, although you could use this advice every single week if you wanted to, do not make your transfers until Friday unless you absolutely have to, like you've got no internet or money is really tight or whatever it might be. Um, do not make your transfers till Friday because we got potential news about double game weeks and blank game weeks coming. Now, people keep asking me when's that going to happen. I don't know. Uh, and I'm going off what Ben Credin's predicted where he thinks there could be doubles in 35 and blanks in 36. Now, this is all, without going into too much detail, this is all down to um, the government trying to get fans back into stadiums before the end of the season. Obviously, they want them in home uh, stadiums, right? You don't want, you know, Southampton having to travel all the way to Leicester or whatever um, it might be, right? So it's all about the home fans. Um, and so it's not guaranteed, but I am going to touch on when I talk about players, I'm going to touch on what could be happening, why that should be in your thinking. So it's all a bit of a caveat, right? This could happen, it might not, but it's the best we have to go on at the moment. So I'm going to talk about that as we go, but don't make your transfers till Friday. Now that intro is out of the way, do give it a like if you enjoy it. Hit subscribe if you are new around here. So close to 150k now. Uh, and yeah, let's jump into it. Okay, so it looks like people have finally got a little bit annoyed with Bruno Fernandes. Already this week, he's had 63,574 transfers out. A key part being that he's only got one goal and one assist over the last six matches. And one of them was the penalty against Man City. So in the last six games, he's had no goals from open play whatsoever. And just that one assist against Brighton. Now... I actually like with transfers, timing is everything, right? And sometimes you take out a player who's got fairly poor fixtures and you kind of hope for the best and it works out. Sometimes it doesn't, right? So I took him out in game week 27 because he was playing Man City. He also had Brighton and Spurs. Uh, and funnily enough, I thought they were the three trickiest fixtures and two of those is where he got his points, right? Man City and Brighton. But either way, it looked like a tricky set of fixtures, which is why he went. And I did consider bringing him back for Burnley and Leeds, but you know, without going into too much detail, my own transfers meant that um, I just didn't need to, right? And I decided to go down the route of Vardy instead. But timing's everything. So if you've held him for all these six, right, I wouldn't be thinking he has to go. I'd be thinking, I'd be looking ahead, basically. You don't want to look behind. Okay, it's frustrating if you kept him. He hasn't got many points, but you need to look ahead. Now, first of all, with the stats, they're actually not that bad, right? He's actually right up there in terms of players over the last six. 1.94 expected assists. He's only got one. 1.67, that's XG. That's non-penalty, right? So that doesn't include, if I added in the penalty for Man City, that would actually be higher. So 1.67 open play goals, and he's got none. So he is maybe underperforming on his stats over that small period of time, although obviously for the whole season you could look at it and it might be a bit different. But he's had eight shots in the box, still creating 13 chances. The key question is, is this the right time to sell him? Liverpool, not a good game. I've seen people go into Son, for example. Uh, that actually seems to be the key one, to be honest. I don't think many people are going to go Fernandes to Salah this week because they play each other. But Fernandes to Son looks like a good move because Son has Sheffield United at home. The thing is, Bruno Fernandes potentially has a double in game week 35. And this is why I'm saying wait till Friday to hopefully get that news. And if he does, it's Aston Villa away and Leicester at home. So that's a pretty good fixture combo to have. The only thing is, and I think this is really important, is any of the teams from, or sorry, any of the players from Arsenal, Chelsea, Leicester, Man United, like Bruno Fernandes, if they double in 35, they, they will blank in 36. And therefore, over a three-game week period, you're only getting three fixtures still. You're getting an extra one in 35, and then none in 36. So if you bought in Son, for example, he would have three fixtures over those three game weeks. But he wouldn't double, but he also wouldn't blank. So same amount of fixtures. Now, obviously, if you kept Bruno for the double then you'd have your three fixtures, then you could sell him, right? And that is a tactic to get an extra fixture. That's all going to depend on what your other moves are. So the, the long and the short of it is, I think if we get news this week that Man United have a double in 35, I would probably keep Bruno Fernandes. I'm going to free, if I free hit in 35, which is currently the plan, Bruno Fernandes will be in my team because Aston Villa away and Leicester at home is one of the best potential combos there could be. I fully think that Son is a better option this week. I don't like Bruno for Liverpool, so you could make that short-term move. And to be fair, after that, it is then um, Leeds for Spurs, followed by Wolves, followed by Villa. So Son's fixtures are good. I think he's a great option. I've got him in my team as well. Um, but I think there's 
potential good reason to keep him for that double. And look, Fulham at home, Wolves away are probably not that bad when it comes to fixtures either. So I actually think the fixtures aren't bad. Because of that double, I would really hold off selling him for now. But if that doesn't happen, then yeah, I can see why you might want to spend your money elsewhere and potentially go for Son and then use that extra cash to boost somewhere else in your squad. Honestly, what an absolute hero Ian Atcher is. We don't even need to spend much time on this because I feel like we're going to be talking about him every week. Just buy him. If you haven't got him, buy him. Don't be that person that thinks, right, I've missed the boat now. I don't want to get on him because everyone's already got their points. If you look at his stats, I mean, they are crazy. This is all non-penalty as well. 4.15 expected goals over the last six is mad. 1.73 expected assists is also mad. And by the way, uh, I'm just going to bring it up here when I'm when I'm doing this. Um, we talked a lot about, or I talked a lot about Lingard, his hot streak. It will come to an end. His numbers were okay, but the chances of him continuing weren't that high. With Ian Acho, I don't quite feel the same way because... Yes, okay, he scored a lot of points. He probably won't, he probably can't keep this run going forever. But his underlying numbers, not just from the last six, in general this season are great. So his expected goals plus his expected assists per 90 is 0.66. That's really high. There's not many players in the league that will get near that, let alone beat it. Uh, as an example, Jamie Vardy's like 0.61. I think De Bruyne is a bit higher, but that's probably to be expected, right? And that's not even like a new thing for him. So it was 0.66 this season. It was 0.67 last year. Now, he also played 20, or he played a part in 20 matches last year um, and had 12 starts. So exactly the same as this year. He's played a part in 20 matches so far and had 12 starts. And his stats are almost identical, right? 0.67, 0.66. That is really good. So he's a great option. Southampton away, really good fixture. Newcastle at home, really good fixture. He might also get a double in that game week 35 if, obviously, the whole double and blank thing happens. And if he does, it would be Newcastle at home and Man United away. So obviously, Man United is not easy, but it's a double fixture with one really good one for an awesome price as well. He's only 6.2 million. He's still is so cheap the end of the season right and obviously the slower you get on these players the less obviously the amount of good fixtures they have we knew that Leicester had good fixtures like two or three game weeks ago now they've only got two really good ones left but the rest of the fixtures so let's say they have a double in 35 and a blank in 36 yes they play Chelsea away and Spurs at home but to be honest he's so cheap you could just bench him Remember earlier on in the season, and probably still now, a lot of us had eight playing attackers, like Rafinha in there, or whoever it might be, Watkins up front, or something like that, and you'd bench one of them every week. You can definitely do that with Ian Acho because of his price. So even if he has a double in 35, you could just bench in 36. And to be honest, in 37, 38, you could possibly just play him, right? He's playing that well. For his price, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Like I wouldn't like to target kind of Chelsea away and Spurs at home necessarily with a big hitter. There might be better ways to spend your money. But at Ian Atro's price, there is very few strikers that come anywhere near him right now. The only slight doubt would be if Barnes comes back, but there's not even any indication of when that might be. And given how good Ian Atro is being right now, I don't know how quickly Rodgers would want to change things up. They're not bottling the top four. They look in prime pole position to get it. Uh, and the next two fixtures are crucial, right? You get points, you get three points from Southampton and another three points from Newcastle. That is pretty much going to be the top four locked, and you're not have to, having to worry about these tougher fixtures. Why would he change it? Ian Atcher, if you've not got him, just buy him. Okay, so Jota is a player a lot of people are getting frustrated with, right? 55,348 transfers out. I brought him in three game weeks ago, and he's literally done nothing since then, right? So he's got one point this week. I'm just looking here. Three points the week before and two points before that, which is hugely frustrating considering he got 20 points in the two game weeks before that against Arsenal um, and Wolves. Now, obviously, the key question part of the video is should you be selling him? I, I can't help but just look at those fixtures and fixate on them. Um, obviously, Klopp played all four attackers against Newcastle, uh, and then he brought Jota off before 60 minutes. Now, one thing to note with Jota is we know that his minutes aren't guaranteed, right? Remember that if you bought him in already, then 
you've brought him in knowing that his minutes aren't guaranteed. So him coming off early, yes, it's annoying, but it shouldn't be that much of a shock. He might not even start against Man United. He might not start against Southampton or any of these fixtures. He may not start in right. We know that. And I'm thinking around his price, who else is there to go for? So a lot of people went for Greenwood last week. He did nothing. Now he's got Liverpool. Then he's potentially got a double, then a blank, right? So Greenwood's won. Madison, even his minutes don't seem completely guaranteed right now in terms of he is starting, but he's, he tends to be brought off a bit early and obviously he's trying to get up to kind of four match fitness yes if you've not got Lingard that could be a good move Burnley away this week West Ham's fixtures are quite good for the end of the season but looking at Jota's numbers 2.45 expected goals um, over the last six and how many goals has he actually scored so he scored three so he's about par with where he is but if you watch those games like Newcastle and Leeds and that uh, more so probably Newcastle and Villa to be honest he probably should have had more points, and I'm not quite sure I was come away with it. But he is kind of matching his numbers, and they're quite good. 17 shots to the box. That's more than Ian Acho over his last six games. And if you bear in mind that he didn't even start the Arsenal game, and he only played 57 minutes against Newcastle, yes, that's obviously a kind of mark against him because his minutes aren't guaranteed. But also it shows how often he's in there, how good his goal threat is that he's having that many shots. For me... Jot as a hold, but I will say for like for my team, for example, if Rafinha's fit, I'm probably going to bench Jota this week, and then I'm going to free hit in game week 35 if there's a double. So for me, it's a bit easier to forego those fixtures because I've possibly got a better player in Rafinha for this week, and then I don't need him for 35, and I get him back for West Brom, Burnley, and Palace. I'm just I'm just not seeing many standout players around his price that can guarantee you minutes and better points. Jesse Lingard, possibly. Bowen, possibly. But Saka, Greenwood in particular, have got big Europa League games coming up, and they could get their minutes managed. They could not start a game that's coming up soon. We just don't know. I mean, Man United is like Europa League, Liverpool, Europa League now. So is Greenwood going to start all three of them? Possibly not. But if he misses games in the Europa League, maybe he starts um, the league games. But I just think that we've quickly forgotten what great value Jota can be. And a lot of people talk about how he needs to be on a hot streak. I mean, we're talking three games where he's blank. The previous two, or sorry, the previous three games before that, he got three goals, right? And we saw earlier on in the season what he can do. So I do think he's going to keep getting minutes. I do think they're going to be managed, but we knew that anyway. So for me, depending on whether you need to really play him this week and what your strategy is with potential doubles and blanks, I think he's a hold, uh, but I can see where people are getting rid, especially if they don't own Lingard. So I'm not going to spend too long on Dallas just because I spoke about him quite a bit yesterday in my watch this video, i.e. I am really thinking about bringing him in too. So definite buy for me, just like 64,000 managers have already done. Now, obviously, a lot of that came from the 17 points he got two weeks ago. But also, Leeds have just played Man United and done quite a good defensive job against them and getting that nil-nil. Uh, and look, I, I, I feel like they changed strategy a little bit, but I have seen some good kind of analysis on the fact that obviously yes their centre backs are back and playing now getting matches under their belt fit they're not having to chop and change all the time but I saw some people point out that that maybe that is letting them play in a different style maybe that's allowing them to defend a little bit deeper because they trust the centre backs now perhaps not a situation they've been in I, I gotta be honest I don't know the exact reason this has happened whether it's a system change whether it's because of the personnel and the system but against Man United they they just didn't feel as gung-ho like in previous games I've watched them, they get the ball and it's just, it's not like, it's not headless chickens or anything like that. There's obviously a system in place and there's a reason they overload the attack like that. But they didn't feel like they were getting as many men forward at a time or at least not rushing to do it. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I'm happy to be told I'm wrong and to be told in the comments why that is. Either way, what I'm trying to say is I think Lee's defence looks good right now. I mean, I like Dallas anyway, right? And I always plan to have him for these fixtures, especially Burnley, Southampton, West Brom. When I sold him for Alonso, I literally said in the stream when I was looking at players I would take or I'd bring back in for um, Alonso, and I was like, it's probably going to be Dallas, to be honest. So it was a stupid move in the first place. But Burnley, Southampton, West Brom looking really good. I don't know if he has to come in this week. A lot of that is going to depend on what your current defence is and who you're replacing. I think Brighton's okay for a clean sheet. Um, Spurs, obviously, a little bit more difficult. Spurs did really well against Leeds in the reverse fixture. It'll be interesting to see whether the same thing happens this time around at home for Spurs. But, yeah, I think Brighton, Burnley, Southampton, West Brom... 
to me, that looks like at least two clean sheets. Uh, and we know that Dallas can get an attack and returns on his day. He's already got 10. So, yeah, I like the buy. I think you could put it off to game week 36 if you wanted to, but buying him this week is not an issue for me. So Watkins continues to be unpopular. 43,000 plus transfers out already. I can see why. Even though he got an assist, a really, really good assist, to be fair, at the weekend, uh, the fixtures aren't looking great, right? So the last five include Man United, Spurs, Chelsea. Now, Villa are one of the teams that we know will double at some point before the end of the season. With some of the clubs, like Arsenal, Chelsea, Leicester, etc., it's all based on what Ben thinks will happen because of the fans uh, getting back into the stadiums. With Villa, they literally have another fixture to rearrange. So they will rearrange that and it'll probably be in 35 or 37, but we don't know exactly when that extra fixture is Everton at home as well. So that's to come. So from now until the end of the season, they have Everton away, Crystal Palace away and potentially a double in 35. Oh, I'd be tempted to keep. It depends who I don't have already. Like I'm thinking about strikers. Like My front line is Kane, Vardy, Iheanacho. And to be honest, there aren't many other strikers right now that I would want instead Calvert-Lewin potentially, but if I had Watkins, I wouldn't make the swap. Bamford looks good, I think, but I would rather wait until 36 to 38 to get Bamford rather than get him now for Brighton, who's a pretty good defence, and Spurs. And we're not quite sure um, how they're going to do under Mason just yet. Obviously, they did well against Southampton-ish, and then they did really poor against Man City. But who 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 doesn't, right? Um, looking at the stats, they're pretty poor. 1.35 XG over the last six isn't great. Nine shots in the box is okay, but obviously we've seen players on this list with plenty more. Uh, and obviously Watkins' role in the team is a lot more than just goal scoring, but from an FPL point of view, we don't really care about that. We want him taking shots. Um, so unless you've not got Ian Atcher already, I would be tempted to hold him. What I will say is Grealish is a massive factor in how well Villa do. Like I've talked before about sometimes when a player gets injured they don't necessarily disrupt the whole team but there's certain players and Grealish is one maybe Bruno Fernandes to a certain extent at Man United where things just don't run the same and that kind of worries me and Dean Smith has not put a time scale on Grealish like last week he literally just said he's out right and he was kind of straight to the point about it so I think there is there are some reasons to hold Everton away and then potentially a double that followed by Crystal Palace away. They are pretty good fixtures. If I didn't have Ian Atcho, I think I would make the swap. And the longer that Grealish is out, the worse I think Watkins becomes as an option. Um, but if he can keep getting great assists like he did at the weekend, who knows? Maybe he'll keep ticking over with points. So there we go. That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed it, do hit that like button. Hit subscribe as well. Your support this season has been amazing. Keep it going for just a few more game weeks, please. It does help out the channel. Um, I'll be back tomorrow with a game week preview. So I'll put a question uh, tweet up on Twitter. So if you're not following me, there's links to that in the description below as well. And obviously, I'll have team selection and everything else towards the end of the week. And I'm hoping... I'm hoping that I get to make a double and blank video this week, but who knows? Who knows when the Premier League will announce the fixtures? Uh, it's got to be soon, though. Like, if there's if there's potentially going to be doubles in 35, they'd want to hurry up and announce them. They could come after the deadline. So it's tricky. Don't make your transfers until late this week if you absolutely, um, you know, as long as you do absolutely, you know, just can't, right? If you can hold on, make sure you do lastly if you've not already signed up to patreon patreon.com slash let's talk fpl if you want to support the channel a little bit more there is a link in the description below uh, a few perks and benefits over there slack access extra q and a's and stuff like that um so yeah if you want to check it out link in the description below otherwise i'm gonna leave it there i will be back tomorrow thank you for watching hit that like button hit subscribe i'll see you soon